Welcome to my channel. I've actually never done a solo in the camera podcast or recording before, apart from just my travel videos and content that we create otherwise. So this is something that's quite uncomfortable for me, but I thought it was really important to come on the screen and share 11 things that I learned when I went offline for 11 days. So I was lucky enough to book myself a vitamin vacation, as it's now called, in Rhodes, Greece for 11 days. And I kid you not, I didn't realize how much I needed it. But then I came back to London and I realized that everything is super busy and chaotic. And so I need to relive those 11 days physically, spiritually, metaphorically despite not being on holiday. So this video is 11 things that I learned when I went offline for 11 days. I'm gonna go through each one and I was writing them down on my phone whilst I was away. So I do have some kind of guided script, but also I hope that it resonates with people who are maybe feeling burnt out or overwhelmed or unsure or confused or just trying to understand how they can better their working lifestyle. So for those who may not know, I run a business, I'm an author, I have a BBC radio show, I do content for a living. But actually what it really means is that I'm constantly producing output of some kind. And what tends to happen is that your brain gets stuck or you may feel like you have brain fog or your brain just gets stuck. I mean, one thing I realized is that for the last three years, just over three years from Jan 2020, when I decided, hey, I'm gonna be my own boss. I have been constantly running. And at some point you just wanna stop and take stock and refresh and just think, are you even going on the right path? And what does good look like? Because I think one thing I realized is that before I hit 30, I've done a lot of things that people wanna do. I've ticked off a lot of things on my bucket list, right? I don't know, I wrote a book. I mean, sometimes I look at my book and I think, Okay, well, if I was able to write a book and be disciplined and sit down and focus, then why am I losing focus now? Or you built a business or you built a brand or you have 50,000 in social following, whatever that really means today. Or the fact that I'm brave enough to do this discussion. I started a YouTube channel, went viral on LinkedIn, you know, have my own BBC radio show. I mean, I've done a lot of things that people want to do, including myself. And that just means that a lot of my dreams as a young girl have been fulfilled. So now I'm trying to figure out what the next three years, five years, 30 years look like. And one thing I love doing is traveling. And so when I booked my trip to Rhodes and Greece, one, it's because I felt like it was slightly untapped, which is the kind of destination I like, so you can go and learn. Two, it's to go immerse yourself in a new culture because there's so many things that you can take away. Three, it's to get some fresh air and just to allow your creative juices to flow. And outside of that, it was just giving yourself a little bit of a treat, you know? If you've done something for a long time or even a short time, but you feel like you're deserving, why not treat yourself? So anyways, I guess I'd gone off on a tangent, um, but that's what happens when you're just speaking directly to the camera with a mic on. So 11 things that happened when I went offline for 11 days. Number one, my thumbs and my fingers and my mind fidgeted so much that despite not having any apps on my phone and not even being connected to the Wi-Fi, I would automatically, without knowing, wake up, get my phone and just start scrolling. Like it was just something that my body was now doing by itself. And the first time it happened, it happened. The second time it happened, it happened. The third time I had to catch myself and I was like, this is not okay. My mind, my fingers, my thumb, they wanted me to scroll on the phone expecting messages to pop up, thinking about where someone might be, who's contacting you, what other people are saying. And then I started doing some research around that and I found that on average, we spend more than three hours online. And now there's actually a term called texting thumb or texting finger, depending on how you text. And it's that your body or the muscle is so in tune and automated to just scroll and scroll and scroll. You can scroll like that, you can scroll like that, depending on what device you're using, that you do it without even realizing. And I realized that, well, actually the, the truth was after a few days, my finger started hurting. And I realized that actually you start to feel these body aches that 
you weren't aware of before because you're just doing things in automation without really thinking about it. The second thing that happened when I was offline for 11 days, I became really frustrated and I got FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. And I got frustrated at not being online, not knowing what was happening, not understanding what was around me. I was like, oh, what if I've missed an opportunity? Or what if someone sent me a message on Instagram and I haven't been able to pick it up? And I actually got my sister to sign into my Instagram just to make sure that didn't happen. So it's a bit of cheating. Or what if I've missed out on this big paycheck because I'm not online and I can't be there in person? And there's a lot of academic literature that cites as a consequence of being offline, the fear of missing out which is basically the fear of not being able to interact in a timely fashion and whatever that time means to you. I mean, I read some stats online which says something along the lines of, you know, 10 years ago, our attention spans were on average seven minutes. Now they're seven seconds. Like you go on TikTok and after seven seconds you get bored. And that's why even when you start conversations, it's really the first seven to 20 seconds maximum that count because then you're already boring people or they're just switching off. The third, and it's related to my body aching, is I started noticing the discomfort in my body and also just my posture. So because you're always on your phone, you're looking down and I would find myself doing this and this and this. And I realized that it wasn't a healthy state because I found my shoulders aching or my neck aching or my back. And so I actively started looking up or rolling my shoulders back, or realizing what weight am I really carrying, especially when you're on a beautiful island, or you've chosen this life. I chose to run a business, right? I chose to be an entrepreneur. So that's really on me, and that means that I can also manage my calendar. I then started doing other research, because what I don't wanna do is I don't just wanna bring 11 things I've learned to this conversation without really knowing what the facts are, and if there are any facts in general society. And there was a blog, on an educational website which spoke about the good, bad and ugly side of media. And one of the ugly sides that we often don't talk about is our posture and how it actually physically manifests in our bones and our body and our growth and our hormones and how we don't really give ourselves the time to grow um, because we are hunched back and we are looking down and we are constantly doing things with our or certain ligaments um, and not not the other muscles and you might find that when you go to the gym for example or where you, where you do a new workout or where you're going on a long walk and you're like these are muscles that maybe I haven't used for a long time and they're aching yeah because they they feel neglected or your muscles are aching because they're constantly in use and you're not giving them time to rest right like when I was prior to holiday like many of us I wake up at 8am and I go online straight away and then I don't stop being online until 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. And you're constantly looking at a screen or you're constantly just scrolling or you're just expecting something to happen. And so you're not giving your body or your brain time to rest. So that brings me on to my fourth point. The fourth thing that I learned after being offline for 11 days was to look up and to be more aware. So I found myself people watching, which when I was in my third year of university, I remember or my second year of university, my manager, her hobby at lunchtime was to go and people watch. And I just thought that was the saddest thing. And I was like, who does that? Like, who really does that for a living? And now in my wiser age, I love to people watch. I love to just go and to see what people are up to, what they're wearing, what they're thinking. Obviously you don't know what they're thinking, but you imagine what their names are what they're talking about. I sit there and make up stories to be like, oh, this person's called X and this person's called Y and maybe this is what they're talking about, what they're doing day to day, what they're eating. And I think the one thing that comes with traveling, especially when you're people watching is, especially if they're locals, you, you kind of figure out what's good on the menu. And so sometimes I just people watch before I go and order from a restaurant or go to a cafe or get a cup of coffee or tea and I look at, what does the majority have? And that must be good because most people have it, or at least it should be something that I should try. I'm also not necessarily shy as a character. So I also find that when you are more aware of your surroundings, be that the sky, the sea, where you're going, what's there to do, you're not afraid of going up to those who live there or at least are walking around to you and saying, hey, what do you recommend I do? Where should I go? What should I see? And I found, well, obviously this is common knowledge, or at least I think it should be, the experiences of, of those on the ground are so different to what we see or read online. I mean, I can do a blog, which I've done on 
You know, I just posted one recently which was 48 hours in Tallinn or I could do a vlog on walk through Lindos with me, which is great, but nothing is like the authentic local experience and you can only get that by actually going and speaking to people who are there. That brings me on to my fifth point. I had the freedom to experiment. I tried new foods with no social expectations because there's no social media. I wasn't taking pictures to put them online. I was just enjoying the moment to enjoy the moment. There was no expectation of who's going to see this, who's going to watch this, what is someone going to say? It was, that's cool and that's new on the menu. I've never tried that. Let's give it a go. One thing I tried, I've never tried before. Over the last few years, I've started eating fish and I never thought that I could eat a fish where I could see the whole fish in the fish's eyes. I just thought that was super creepy. But because I was really in this like mojo of, it's cool, I'm here, I'm gonna learn new things, I'm gonna immerse myself in the culture, there's no expectations. I ate my first whole fish where I could see the fish's eyes and I had to take the bones out and I think it was a sea bream and it was so delicious. But I just think how much I've missed out on because you're always just looking down. I think also it helped me to be more positive and to be more happier and to feel more fulfilled but to make more kind of you know s substantial memories that I'm going to remember and there's an interesting article which I've linked in the comments around research that's coming out to show that social media changes the way that we feel about our memories and there's new research to say if you are not online or not constantly on right online and if you are enjoying something in that moment or if you're not constantly doing something to be validated from someone else i.e i'm going to pose like this because it's going to go to instagram or i'm going to eat this ice cream because it looks cool or i'm going to get this bubble tea because xyz then you're going to be in a position where you are most definitely going to remember that moment differently and so let's go back to the fish story i remember it as something which was new and captivating and such a great experience that I can talk about obviously that's not the same for everyone but I also imagine that if I just did it for the clout or for social media I maybe wouldn't have enjoyed it as much because I would have thought am I is this picture look okay you know do I have my mouth open can you see chips in my mouth can you see food and I think the, uh, the, the point being is it enabled positive memories but it also helped us to reframe memories in a way that because we're continuously online and we feel like we have to be hyper productive, we are in a position where we don't really enjoy the moment as much. So number six, 11 things I, I learned or I did whilst I was offline for 11 days. Now, I read six different books in 11 days, six different books. I always find it wild that I can read that much or read that fast and they were brilliant. I'm gonna do another vlog which I'm going to link somewhere here about the six books that I read, rating them, talking about their stories. But it was really good because you get lost in someone else's stories. You prioritize different learning methods that you wouldn't have otherwise. And you use a new, a new way of escaping. Now, I've binge watched most of the Netflix reality shows. That is my escapism. But when I was away, I didn't have Netflix and I didn't want to be online or I didn't want to be watching TV. I just wanted to get lost in the words, in the books. And every day I'd learn a new word and I'd put it in my notes to be like, here's a word from a book that I didn't know before. How do I use that in my day-to-day -day life? I also found out that I really like historical fiction or investigatory um, non-fiction, which are basically real life stories documented in a book. And I remember I read Black Edge um, a few months ago. I just randomly found Black Edge like as, as a book and never heard of this genre before. And it was really interesting because it was about the kind of demise of and, and fraudsters in, in the trading market in the US. It was a real story. And now in this trip, I read the story of Elizabeth Holmes, the founder of Terranos. And it's called Bad Blood. And it was so interesting because there were so many details about her experience that I'd never come across, but also the fact that she, without a doubt, manipulated some of the largest global leaders, some of the largest businesses and global leaders. And, you know, it was, it was her comm strategy, her PR strategy, her marketing strategy. And yes, what she did was completely wrong and it's not cool, but also there's some lessons to be learned there about us as society, how gullible we are too. The fact that not everything is as it seems 
Three, the lengths that people would go to to hide a secret to keep their jobs. And actually what that says about the working culture and what we've done. Four, how PR and marketing plays a big part. And five, white privilege in its own right. I mean, I'm not gonna go into the depths of it because this is not that discussion, but it was really interesting. And I wanna make sure that I take away that habit and don't just leave it for holiday because there are, you know, of the six books, I can pretty much recall every story or give you a synopsis, have that story playing out in my mind as if it was a movie. And actually some of them should be movies. But also I think it just makes me, it really unlocked that creative spark that maybe I was longing for, especially now when I think about writing my next book or writing more blogs or just, you know, doing further copywriting for our website or for our socials. It's how do you make something creative and, and bring the user in. The seventh thing I really learned and I think was, was amazing was I just felt more fulfilled and I felt more happy. There's a lot of data and literature, again, I've linked it in the comments or in the description at least, about when we reduce time online, we decrease the feelings of being lonely and one in five of us are lonely. I have a whole TED talk on this that I did in 2019. I myself started LMF Network or my business or even this podcast because there was a point of loneliness involved. But I found that when I took away all the extra noise, the gadgets, the internet to some extent, I started enjoying the simpler things and I felt less lonely and I enjoyed being by myself, but also I realized that I was never alone to begin with. Like the world is around you. It's just what you do and how you make the most of it. And when I was doing research on this, thinking, hey, I feel more fulfilled and I feel happy and I'm not online, is there a correlation? There was a term that came up and I think Anil Dash spoke about it and coined it, which is very much the joy of missing out. So JOMO. And imagine in what? seven days i've gone from fomo to jomo i've gone from hey i had the fear of missing out to i actually want to miss out i'm actually missing out on things that i don't need to be a part of you know the people who love and care for you are on your whatsapp where you have their numbers or their direct contacts with you everything else doesn't really matter we just put a weight on these things without knowing and there was also a study done in the university of pennsylvania and then the bath university which found that even having a seven day social media break can reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. Now I have been through all of that before and as an entrepreneur, unfortunately, you are prone to having more depressed moments, more anxious moments. And maybe that comes with responsibility. Maybe that comes with the amount of work and pressure you put on yourself. Maybe that's just how you're wired. I'm not quite sure. I know that I've done a really good episode with the founder of Lad Bible on his discussion, so Alex, um, on his discussion ADHD chatter. And hopefully if that's already out, by the time this comes out, it'll be linked here. If not, I'll link it at another time. And we spoke about this too. We spoke about having neurodiversity. We spoke about being in the ADHD community. We spoke about anxiety and depression and how it really manifests in different ways. But like I said, not only did I become more fulfilled and happy, but number eight, I started to focus on healthier habits. I would actively schedule time for wellness or for swimming, or I went to an all-inclusive for a week. And rather than just eating things for the sake of it, I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna try and make sure that my plate has what it needs in terms of nutrients and try a lot of fish and try a lot of seafood because I was in Greece and just have the protein that I need and nourish my body and not just go and grab cake for the sake of it because you know, I've got a sweet tooth and who doesn't love a free cake? But just thinking about what you're putting inside, but also making sure every few days, if you haven't gone for that long walk or if you haven't gone for that hike, you're really putting yourself at the center of your wellness and making time for the gym or for swimming. And swimming is something that I've recently actually started um, again, and I lost my confidence a couple of years ago. So prior to going on holiday, I had a couple of lessons, but when I was away, I really, dared myself I was like you just go into the sea like what is the point of coming to an island if you're not going to go into the sea and what you have to understand is it's not that I didn't want to go into the sea it's that I didn't have the confidence to go into the sea because I just felt like I wouldn't be able to flow or I wouldn't survive or I'd just drown and even overcoming those limitations in your own brain both mentally and then physically being able to do do the do the task well now I kind of feel like I can do that with anything and everything that I go into and we're coming to this point where I've done my you know, somewhat brunch turn into a business for five years and we're at this natural point of learning and growing and I feel like my business is my toddler that I'm now having to 
put out into the world and maybe, you know, ask for help and have other people manage and that's completely okay. Number nine, I enjoy the simpler moments, the simpler things. You know, I've spoken about it a couple of times now, being away from the noise. I myself am quite a noisy person and then I don't choose, but I kind of opt for a noisy lifestyle, especially being bang in the center of London and living the life or constantly wearing all the different hats that I do. But I realize that the noise is actually not sustainable and it's not something that I definitely want to be a part of as, as I grow. And you want to live, you know, a, a more authentic life. You want to live a life where it's not the materials that make you happy. Like, I don't need that designer bag. Yes, I have a few. I don't need them. I don't need that designer car. I just need to make sure that I'm fed well and that I have shelter and that I have a good book. And, you know, it's just going back to those simpler moments of thinking of when you were a kid, what did you really enjoy? And it wasn't all these extracurricular activities that are very new to us, actually. It was the simpler moments of sitting down with a loved one and having a chat or looking outside and seeing a clear sky or just going on a walk and feeling the fresh air. Number 10, in all of this, right, by day 10, I felt like my confidence had been boosted. And I speak a lot about confidence and imposter syndrome. I speak about the fact that, you know, women are made to feel like they're imposters, like we're frauds, like we're not good enough. And prior to going away, one of the reasons I went away is because I was feeling like I'm in that spiral. I thought I wasn't good enough, that I was burning out, that I wasn't capable, that I didn't know what the next logical or creative step looked like. And so I was afraid of giving things a go, even though failure is literally what got me here, right? I've got a whole TED talk on it and it's something that I'm really proud of in my life. But for some reason, and going back to the beginning of this conversation, I've achieved a lot before I'm 30. So you start to think, how did I achieve that? And if I did achieve that, actually what else is there left to do? And of course there's a ton, right? But it's also about reevaluating what good looks like for you, what success is. Is it to be viral online? Is it to live in that multi-million pound house? Or is it just to make sure that you feel loved and fulfilled and happy? And what does happiness really mean? And then you do a lot more research, you realize, you know, people that have loads of money in the world aren't the happiest people. They have access and means to becoming more happier, but it doesn't mean they use it. And so going back to the point I was trying to make is, not only did it boost my confidence, but it made me realize that we're all just human and we're all struggling. And sometimes you need that moment of not only reassurance, but to be reminded that it's okay to not know what's happening and it's okay to feel a little bit down and it's okay to feel like you don't know what the next step is, but you need to be confident enough to know that you're gonna get through that. And I think that's where my confidence really kicked in. It was, I'm gonna get through it. If I can eat fish, and if I can swim, and if I can be in a position where I'm people watching and that's fun for me, I can definitely find my confidence again. I just need to give myself a moment to enjoy whatever feeling this is because you can't feel the highs if you don't feel the lows. And the last and maybe most important point, you know, the 11th thing that I learned by being offline for 11 days is I enjoyed being bored. And if you think about it, boredom is a skill that the majority of us run against. And we're like, we don't wanna be bored. We don't like being bored, but as I get a little bit older, I realize that boredom and listening are two skills that we really should be taught and we should have to practice like it's a muscle. I enjoyed being bored, which based on my lifestyle and the trends and being online is not a skill that I'm very good at or that I've forgotten, most definitely. And also I found that I have like severe dopamine crashes, right? So it's like you need to be on a high all the time. And so being bored kind of fizzles that out. But by being bored, it means that you're able to think clearly and you are able to recharge your brain again there's a link in the description myo clinic the health clinic also talks of this too you can boost your brain you can increase creativity you can problem solve you can actually restore parts of your brain that maybe you've uh, you know burnt out over time and i know as someone who has adhd and, and kind of other various mental health and, and migraine bits and bobs going on for me, being bored just meant that I was able to give my brain a moment to relax. And actually, I don't know about you, but I don't remember the last time I just gave my moment to relax. And when my family especially are like, you need to relax. I'm like, okay, for every person who tells me to relax, you know, I'd probably be rich by now if I just, you know, earn a pound or a penny each time. But actually, no one can make you do it. It's what you do and what you choose to do to get there. And all in all, those are the 11 things that I've learned. I appreciate that some of them went off on a tangent, but I think you get the vibe. I hope to carry on being bored and finding fulfillment in the simpler things of life. 
boosting my confidence by giving myself a break, reminding myself that everything is good, if not great, and it's just what you make of the opportunity, losing myself in books, fiction and non-fiction, learning from others, especially cultures, traveling as not only a treat, but a form of recovery and getting in the, the vitamins and the nutritions and the, and the recovery and traveling not just as a form of recovery, but also as a point of being able to scope out new ideas but also just working on becoming healthier and sustaining a, a wellness-based lifestyle, which is what ultimately we're all, we're all kind of, you know, looking for. Because if you're not healthy, then how can you really enjoy being wealthy? And maybe they're the same or similar things. But those are 11 things that I learned by being offline for 11 days. I hope that some of that is helpful for you. And I'm sure it will be for some of you and for others. If there's anything else that you would like me to talk about, feel free to drop them in the comments or to DM me or to get in touch. Like I mentioned, it was actually really uncomfortable for me to speak just directly into a camera or a mic and have a solo podcast or, of, or kind of, you know, YouTube video and have that main character energy. But if it wasn't for these 11 days, maybe I wouldn't have done it because I would have been afraid or scared or resisted um, in my own way. And there's a really good book called The, the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, which talks about resistance. And we can talk about another time, but there's not the summary is, and I was gifted it for Christmas, it's, you know, you are basically your biggest resistance and there are resistors out there. It's just how you overcome them and how you choose to, especially as a creative or as a visionary, unlock those different aspects and, and, and really make them work for you in a way that works for you. But I think all in all, I can, I literally talk for a living. So I'm just going to stop right here and say thank you so much for listening, for watching, for being involved. I hope that this was helpful. Like I said, if there's anything else I can talk about, you want me to touch on, really excited to do so. And hopefully this is just the start of reevaluating the way that we live and thinking about what, what good looks like moving forward. I was sitting there at the, on, on the pool side and I started just realizing that I was learning something every day. And so I, I started noting that down and I'm not a big fan of journaling. I just find it really difficult to write stuff down. Maybe it's my fear of like someone checking my journal. You get that from when you're younger, especially when you're coming from a, you know, a, a kind of a, an ethnic minority family. But I, I think, sorry, to go back to your question, why 11? I was there for 11 days. I started learning everything once a day. The first few days I actually journaled in my notes and started just reflecting on how I'm feeling, the fact that I get agitated or wake up early or try and scroll or try and like feel, feel that element of FOMO. And then by the 11th day, I felt this feeling of like more calm and boredom and less burnout and just like fresher and this sense of freedom that I thought actually, one, it's a great conversation to be had online. Two, I've been watching other people's kind of solo podcasts and I always thought when I'm gonna do one, it needs to be something of substance. And three, you know, the, the concept of 11 things in 11 days and 11-11 is just an angel number anyway. I just thought it sticks out to people. So hopefully the video will do well and people will resonate with it but I also thought it was quite angelic in its own right and I'm a big energy believer so it was like 11 days 11 things there, there must be something that the higher universe wants me to put out there so here it is am I scared that things are going to go back to where they were absolutely and actually the the night that I landed I fell asleep I woke up and I thought about downloading my app and then I realized well I don't want to and I don't need to and actually I've been quite happy offline and nothing bad has happened, nothing big has happened. Everyone has my email address. One thing I did find was I got into, I started seeing the same habits of just jumping online and being on my laptop and being in front of the screen and just emailing. So I'm, I'm gonna take a step back from that. But in terms of the phone, the great thing is that most social apps now have a desktop feature. So I'm just gonna use that desktop feature until until I, I no longer kind of need to have that element. I'm gonna start scheduling things a lot more, but also not feeling like I'm obliged to post. And the one thing I am gonna do is a lot of my content sits on my iPhone, which is great, until you realize that one, you don't have memory, two, the iCloud doesn't work in the same way. And three, when you download editing apps on your phone, they're actually really chunky in terms of storage. So they wipe out everything. So I'm actually going to go and invest in a small digital camera or a vlogging camera and just keep that for my content, for my pictures, for my camera and video use, plus the cameras here. And just make sure that my iPhone is my life phone, right? It's like my personal phone. That doesn't need apps on it. And that's actually one reason why I got the iPhone was that for that reason I got it to create content but not to really upload content and then I have my work phone which is somewhere in my bag which maybe will have my social apps but in summary 
you know, habits take at least 90 days to reform. So I'm not going to say something magical is going to happen in 11 days, but it's definitely on the right track. Two, you have to catch yourself. Three, you have like time limits on your phone or kind of apps. Four, use desktop features. And five, one of the reasons why I wanted to create this video too is so that anytime I feel stuck, I can go back and at least listen to the top points and be like, hey, Sonia, you literally have to hold a bunch of people online, you know, maybe millions of people online, that this is how you felt. How can you go back on your own words? So a big part of this exercise is to be accountable and to say, hey, this is what I felt. Keep me accountable and, and call me out if I fall back into those habits, but also if, if hopefully if I can do it, you can do it too.